Um, my basic plan for the day is that we have a Git party, which is a lot like a YouTube party, which is basically that we show off things that we've done before or seen before. And uh, if you have something really cool that you want people to know about, um, there are probably lots of people that have never heard of it before. Like we just talked about um, the um, git grab and git ls file, which is very minor command. You can perfectly live without it, but if you, if you know about git grab, it's, it's absolutely great and it's, uh, it helps you a lot. Um, and I can just show you with, just start with git grab. Was, what was I looking for yesterday? Um, uh, we were talking about the clock tick rate. So, git grab simply goes through all files that are in a git repository and does a grab on them, which is far, far easier than doing a find and uh, print zero and xr grab or whatever you use, or grab dash r, because it just leaves all the object files. That's, that's a very useful thing. I, that's one of the things that I do all the time. Um, one question. Do you have a search in the inventory, or in, in just in <coughs> right, files of the working um, tree files? By default, it, it looks in the files that you have checked out, all the files that are part of the index. Um, you can grab in some other version, you can say, I want to grab in version 3.0. Um. I guess your question was, does it grab into the commit messages as well? Uh, I don't know, uh, it, if it, it grabs uh, in the current version or huh. you know, in the whole history? I've just set up a new git tree, so I don't have everything in here yet. Um, uh, multiple remotes. Uh, maybe I should ask how what what people have are used to working with and what they are not used to working with. So, how many people of you are using more than one remote repository? Okay, so that's roughly half, maybe a little bit less. Um, I've cloned this, this tree that I have here from my own um, so from, from our arm um, sock tree. Um, so there's just one oh, well, I actually tried to add another remote. <coughs> um, there's the, the one remote which is by default called origin. Origin is where normally you pull from and where you push to. And you can see what's up in origin, remote show uh, origin, and those are a lot of branches. And now I'm trying to add another uh, branch. I call this Torvalds. Everyone know the new URL? He just changed it. It, it used to be Linux 2.6.git, it's now Linux.git. And I do a patch on that tree. <coughs> and that should soon get me all the latest comments that Linux has done since he went diving. Um, so you can have any, yes? Do you have a command to show the URL of the remote in the cloud you yes. are tracking? So I did, uh, I did git, git remote show the, the name of the remote and it first shows the URL. Okay. Could <coughs> um, I use a, a git config list? And that's it. Well, git remote, yeah. you can also, so git remote show just shows what or what remotes are available, and then um, can pass another a specific remote, and we'll show you where it is. You can also do git remote dash v if you just want 
the name of the remote and the name and the URL you don't want with the ah, very nice. Oh. Never didn't know about that. <laughs> so that's that's what I meant with the Git, with the Git party. We all learn about new things. Yeah, that's really great. And you also noticed that it took quite a while when you do Git remote show. That's because it always checks if the the version you have is still up to date. You can also do Git remote show dash n, which gives you the result right away because then it just looks at what it has cached, and I didn't expect <coughs> this to pull push anything in the last seconds. Um, but back to git grab. Uh, now I have the, the version tags and I can just look in a tag. So this grabs for the git clock uh, for the clock tick rate string in version 2.0. Um, and in version 3.0 for example there were 163 instances of this, and if we compare this to an older version, it's probably a different number. Yeah, maybe not all that old. <coughs> right. So we got rid of six of them, and Deepak is trying to get rid of all of them. Oh, what are you Can, if you have multiple remotes, <coughs> just check out a branch from one of the remotes. <coughs> and then they, you can basically treat them as, as branches. You can, this is just a checkout without a branch, just to look at that. You can, of course, also look at. Um, but I'm typing too fast, I please complain. But I, I think I'm typing slow enough because I always make mistakes. Um, could you move the could you move your uh, terminal to the top half of the Oh yes. Uh, okay. Yeah, sure. Good idea. So uh, yeah. when you have multiple branches, a lot of the time you want to find out what is in one branch but not another. And there's one very uh, tricky thing that I never figured out why that is. And maybe someone can explain explain this to me from in this room. Um, you can do git log um, Torvalds master dot dot my own master. Is, um, Origin master. Um, extra log. No, I do one line here to make it fit on the screen. One line. Okay. So these are all the commits that I have added to my branch that are not already not already in the Torvalds branch. Uh, if I do three dots, it will show the entire difference. Everything that's in Linus tree and not in mine, or the other way around. The difference between two dots and three dots is the merge commit uh, expansion of all the merges. So what what happened here? Um, he took all my individual branches. <coughs> um, but he did not take the for next branch. So my, my tree is, is split up into a few dozen branches, and there are about 10 branches that are pushed individually to Linux. I also have the for next branch. For next is my branch that gets merged into the Linux next tree, but I never pushed that to Linux, uh, which means that all the merge commits that I did they are still in my tree, but not in his. Um, but all the other commits with the extra patches, they all, they all got merged upstream now. Um, back to the git log. So I can, uh, depending on whether I have two dots or three dots, there's uh, it will either show everything that's not yet merged upstream, or it will show the, the entire difference, like what, what happened between the two branches. Um, if I do git diff, 
between the two branches, it's exactly the other way around. Um, so git diff with two dots shows you the difference that you get if you check out the two trees and then do a recursive diff of the two directories. And that's, that's just the, the diff stat. Git diff is a, another command that I use all the time. Uh, and this is a huge diff. If I use three dots, it will only show the, the parts that are in this tree, but not in the mainline tree, which is a lot shorter. And does anyone know why that is? Okay. <laughs> the three dots are, it means that the diff will find the common place and then do a diff from there. Okay, but only in diff, in, in log it's just the opposite. Yeah, but uh, there is a, there was a lengthy discussion in the Git mailing list between Linus and other people. Uh -huh. And Linus, since he has a math background, he wanted the two dots to be like a range uh, operator, while the three dots was a set operator, something like that. Okay. So if you use two dots, it, it will only take one, the starting point and the end point and do a diff from that. So when you do a diff, it's really between this version and that version. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's it's not a range in in, sense, in the sense that it won't it will only give you the diff between those two points. Yep. So, so in, both, in both cases the two dot version is the one you would use most of the time and <coughs> the three dot version is something that that is more special. Yeah. But of course, if you if you want to make this clear, you can use the two dots with the diff command. But then you you need to know what uh, version of the, the mainline kernel you use to for. Yeah. Well, and maybe maybe more complex. Like in, in the ARM subtree, we have all those cross merges. Right. Um, so does it take the first common ancestor if you have to cross merges then? It takes one of them, one of them, yeah. But you don't know which. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's what it does. Okay. Um, so normally I'm just interested in the set of patches that have not actually be merged in whatever way, and uh, I had to be had, had to do some tricks there. Few times when I sent out my my pull requests, um, what I actually did is merge the main line into the current branch and then do a pull request up to the previous commit and then it did everything right. I don't know if that's clear what, what, I, what I actually ended up doing there. Um, I should probably just show a bit what, what my typical workflow is for the ARM software. <coughs> I think that a lot of people are interested in that. As, you, as, as you've seen, there's a lot of uh, branches um, so there's there's so many branches. I've got the, the basic idea. Just to make this a little bit bigger. Um, the basic idea is to have per SOC one branch for fix ups, one <coughs> branch for clean ups, uh, 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 bug fixes. I mean, bug fixes, clean ups, um, new development that is across the boards, um, board level development, like additions of new boards that we eventually want to stop doing. Um, for the OMAP tree, there were actually a, a couple of branches, um, first of all because that's what I got from the OMAP people and they did a really good job at splitting up the work into, uh, into topic branches, but also um, the OMAP tree was just much bigger than all the others that I got. So there are um, a bunch of branches for all map. And then I have, uh, these are trees that I generate. And each of these next branches is basically a composition of the branches across the SOC platforms. So anything that's a, that's a bug fix goes into the next fixes branch. 
and I had to do two branches because of interdependencies. There were um, some bug fixes that were conceptually before cleanups, which is usually a useful thing to do. But in some platforms, they had to do the cleanups first and then the bug fixes. So the order of these branches is everything should go into bug fixes if it has no dependencies. Um, then there's a cleanup branch, and the fixes to branch actually is based off some point in the cleanup branch, and then adds bug fixes that depend on those. And that also meant that I had to submit the cleanup branch first, and then the bug fixes branch once the cleanup branch was merged. Um, but just recreate what I did for the uh, for doing my own branches. Yeah. Create a new branch. How many of you have never used multiple branches in Git? Just a few. Okay. So um, I can. There are multiple ways to create a new branch. This time I create a branch. <coughs> Called the same name. Um, next fixes. Um, checkout dash b means check out the revision while creating a branch. <coughs> and I, I branch it off the two uh, 3.0 RC. <coughs> this is equivalent to git branch uh, version 3.0 RC5 and git checkout followed by git checkout branch. Next fixes. <coughs> so now I'm on, the, on a new branch. This is the version I got from Linus. Um, these are the versions, the, the bug fixes that I want to pull in. And the first thing I can try is an Octopus merge. I merge from the remote that's called Origin. I could also merge from multiple remotes, but this time they are already in this repository, so I merged them. Um, and I start with the AT91, alphabetically, I merged that. And now I'm on the version that has these, these bug fixes. I can also do an octopus merge. Octopus merge uh, means I pull multiple branches into one branch at once. Um, so let's say I pull this one this one and um, this one. So I'm merging the IMX <coughs> bug fixes with the MSM bug fixes and the and the PXA bug fixes, which also just work fine. And I'm not sure if there's any conflict with any of the others. just merge all the remaining ones. And it, you can also merge, merge it when it's already in there. Okay, finally we get it. We, we get a conflict. Um, how many of you have uh, know how to resolve conflicts, or how many of you do not know how to resolve conflicts? Okay, uh, so I probably don't need to show that, it's just... But the basic idea is, I, I look at the conflicts, edit that file, and then check it out, do a commit, and then I've got the optimus You might, you might want to actually show that, because that's, like the... It's not true when you've got the conflicts. Okay, uh, let, let me just do that. Especially git status and the, the, the files are marked differently. So it's just this one file. Um, <coughs> we know a little bit bigger to do the fix up. So I look for the. Are you going to use git merge tool in this case? Git uh, merge tool. I've never <coughs> used git merge tool. Fair enough. So um, that's what I is, do. It, is it something I should use? Um, well, it depends how much you like the uh, gooeyness, right? Because uh, okay. essentially I'm using the three-way uh, div meld with git merge tool. So I see, you know, three columns, the origin, the one version, the second one, and the match one, and I can just click arrows right, uh, left and right to, to 
to select which part is supposed to go into the final version. Uh, which one was that? Sorry? Sorry, I can't cope with the text. Um, get merged. Or just like if you have belt, uh, well, yeah, you have KDEs or KDEs so like, probably. Like this? Yeah, this kind of stuff. And then essentially you just move the bits and pieces between the windows to the middle one, and the middle one is resolved. Ah, very no, nice. This is GVM, GVM will not support that. Meld will support that. Sorry? This is GVM. GVM we can't do this one. Well, yes, because you don't have uh, you don't have the the arrows, nice arrows, but you yeah. still can copy from left to the right manually. The main is nice uh, G8. There's different yeah. merge tools that you can support. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Yeah. There are single keys key you can get in G Yeah, the yeah. merge tool yeah. speaks. Right. If I remember correctly, the git merge tool speaks uh, given the uh, bin div, meld k div, and the x div. If I remember correctly. It was just there in the list when you go back and to the command prompt, you could, you could see all the options of merge tools. Oh, uh, yeah. Merge yeah, tool yeah. candidates open div, k div 3. Oh, yeah, yeah. The yeah. Oh. You have loads of them, I've seen <coughs> so my default is not as simple as that. Okay. Yeah. Um. Okay, so it's also a good excuse to get a widescreen projector. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, I, since I haven't used this before, I just fixed yeah. it up by hand. So this is always the other option. And this, this fix up is probably wrong, but let's just assume that I know what I'm doing here because um, I might have. I, this is what you do when you when you actually know uh, this would be the right fix up, which it is certainly not. Um, you do have to get used to whatever tool you're using. Yes, they give you very different ways of viewing. <coughs> I've always used the Vim to look for the conflict and to fix up the conflict. Uh, in this case, I would um, give in this one. Commit the whole thing. And I just commit it. Right? Normally I should add some comments why I fixed what the, comment, the, the conflict this way. Um, when we look at it with git k, and there you see the octopus merge. Is an octopus merge a commit that's just got multiple merges in one commit? Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what's the benefit of doing that, not just doing merging one or two? But um, <coughs> some people like it to have a, have a cleaner history because these branches are all in, independent of each other, so there's no clear order which branch you need to merge first. So there's no meaning in having them merge in, this, in a particular order. You can always just do a linear merge of it. Of individual branches, um, and if you have a lot of small steps, so if you like, <laughs> couple up a merge, then you right. can. But if, if you have if you have twenty branches and you know there are no conflicts, um, then doing an octopus merge is just faster. Yeah. Okay. And if you have lots of branches, most of the time it will actually not work. So, um, so with the unsock tree, I will do that for all bug fixes. I would do it for all features <coughs> or cleanups, and end up with the. Uh, with all my next branches. <coughs> and then I do the same thing all over. Um, I merge <coughs> the next whatever branches into the four next branch. The four next branches, the one that goes to um, goes to Linux next. Uh, now the, the important difference here um, between the kinds of branches, most of the branches that I have here are never rebased. They are history branches. And once something ends up in the next cleanup branch, I'm trying very hard not to change it again. And I think I, there, were, there were a few times when I had to, um, where I did actually rebase something during the last merge window, but I try really hard not to do it. The for next branch is basically I recreate it whenever I need to. And I do an octopus merge of all the upcoming branches, or I do a linear merge the way that Linux would do it, just to see what conflicts to expect for him. Uh, Linux was, uh, I think he was a little bit annoyed that there were a lot of conflicts in the, uh, in the development branch, and
and um, that's just because I was rather late getting those merged. And they, they were conflicts with a number of other branches. There, were, there was the GKO branch, there was um, uh, some features that went through Russell's tree that touched the same files, and some features, or some, some other parts that went to my own earlier submissions that conflicted with the later one. Um, the way I'm planning to handle that in the future is to just merge the individual branches that Linux has already pulled into that branch, fix up the conflicts myself, and then send that branch to Linux. Um, so for example, I'm usually not using this machine because I, uh, I have two other PCs that have a lot more RAM. If you want to reuse Git efficiently, you need two things. One of them is uh, lots of RAM, the other one is an SSD. Um, this one has an SSD, but it's, it, doesn't, it only has 4 gigabytes of RAM, so it's not as good for, for really doing a lot of work with Git. And try to reflect once in a while. Right, and I haven't. The, the other problem here is I'm running out of disk, disk space on my laptop, and I can't. I don't actually have enough space to repack. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I spent the, the last hour before doing this trying to repack my tree to, to, to better to be able to better show things, and then I gave up eventually. I got a question related to branches. Actually, um, is there a is there a way to specifically ensure that you, you force a fast forward every time you do a, a push or a pull. So if I'm working with multiple mm -hmm. branch, multiple trees, right? So I have a, I, I clone a remote, and then I clone it again, and then I push back to the intermediate and then push it up. And I want to make sure that the intermediate always fast forwards when I push to it. But it doesn't actually happen unless you go into it and then, how do you import, how do you ensure that the fast forward always happens? Um, yeah. to you, yeah, you have to put a hook, I think a hook on the server. You have to do a hook. So that it, when it receives it, it can say, I'm not fast forward, it's fine to fast forward. But I, but that, sounds the, that sounds dangerous. No, but by default, or are you talking about rebasing when you push it? Or? No. Okay, it's you just you want to make sure it doesn't rebase. Right, I want to, yeah. I, I just want to, I, I By just, default. So by default, it will, it will refuse the push yeah. if, it, if it's not uh, a fast forward, but you can't force it. Yes. But, but then, then if you really want to enforce it at the, at the server level, there are hooks that oh, you can okay. install to actually verify that it's, it's really a fast forward and refuse it at the server level. Uh, yeah. okay. It's not, okay. okay. It's not so much that, it's, it's that it is a fast forward, but what happens is the actual state of the check down files is not fast forward. So you have a, you have a clone of remote on your system with oh. some state in it. You clone that again. You do. You have you have an updated, checked out version. You yeah. push that, and the, the but it doesn't the, update. The Git data, copy. right? The Git data in that intermediate one is updated, and it is a fast forward. But the state of the checked out files in that in that intermediate one is not. So the question I have is why, why is the intermediate one checked out instead of a bare repository? Um, for unpleasantly, I mean, it might just be that that's okay. not a supported use case, right? Okay. I, I think that there are some security measures for that that were uh, introduced uh, recently. Uh, Maybe I just need to put a hook in or something. I don't remember the details, but uh, that's, that's an issue that was solved. Yeah, and going to be of course, easy. you can override those those security measures, but there are something in place. Generally, it's just confusing to push to a non bare repository. Right. Well, there's, there's, yeah, it's an ugly. Right. Okay. okay. You can push the branches that aren't the one checked out fine. Right. Right. I'm just doing it wrong. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, how do you handle the original branches now? So you branch them all, you merge them all into Next, right? So what happens with them? Do you? I, I leave them there. So basically, for for reference. So if someone. Um, so something that could happen is that that I have multiple people submitting submitting features for the same SOC. Like there's there's the maintainer. But the maintainer may be on vacation and say, well, this other guy can also do it. 
Um, so I get a pull request from the maintainer, I pull that into one branch, and then I get an urgent feature uh, from someone else, or an urgent bug fix, well, urgent features don't exist. Um, I get an urgent bug fix that, that's supposed to go on the same branch, and then I just pull it in or apply it on top of that branch. And then I pull it in again to the, to the next key. Do you keep reusing those branches for the next iteration or not? Um, and just create new ones? So far I have not, but I, I think that's the, <coughs> that's the basic plan, yes. So because it will fast forward to the, to the next kernel version anyway, because it actually ended up in mainline. Okay. So you just pull or... So at that, at that point I would go... Um, For example, the surf tree got merged, so I can um, check it out. Um, it, now I just pull in to our master, and that should fast forward. And now I'm updating the branch on the server. So you're ready to reuse them now? Hmm? For new. So now you're ready to reuse them for new? Right. Okay. Cool. And of course, I, I could also just pull in the new branch from the maintainer, which is also, um, which also is based on the Torvalds tree. So for someone who's tracking your tree, uh, let's say some branch in there is interesting for my work. Mm -hmm. uh, and I guess your branches are all rebased every time uh, the, the individual branches are not rebased. The only branch that's rebased is the for next branch because that's that's just an octopus merge of the next everything branches. Oh, so, so all your other topic branches are just merges from the original source? Yes. So you, you can track any of the SLC branches and usually any of the next something branches. Um, I would not guarantee that you can track them across multiple kernel versions. But it, you can certainly track them until the merge window. And if you're not sure, then just tell me, and then I know that I'm absolutely not allowed to replace that, that one branch. But normally I don't expect to replace it. But if you ever, if you ever happen to track a rebasing branch, you can do git pull dash dash rebase, and it'll, it'll sort it out. Oh, wow. Okay. It'll rebase your branch on top of the newly rebased upstream Oh, nice. That's great. <laughs> because, because I think uh, what Arn's been talking about right now is mostly maintainer-centric, but yeah. uh, we also need something more developer-centric here, where yeah. we are tracking yeah. some upstream right. branch. And Especially for vendors, yeah. since they need to work for their patches and <coughs> sometimes they are based on some other uh, branches which are always rebased themselves. Yeah. So, just try to play with the little dash dash rebase. Okay. So this, this was just the, basically I, I showed what I'm doing as a maintainer, but of course there's lots of other interests here in this room, and most people will be more on the downstream end than on the, on the upstream end. Um, and we should probably discuss some of that. So the most important thing, as we, we learned this morning in the preliminaries, is really to have topic branches. Um, there's one variation that I, I would recommend. Um, I would not actually recommend rebasing the topic branches to go on top of one another. The way that I would do it is um, to take the topic branches and merge them, do an octopus merge into whatever branch you're working with. So basically you have lots of topic branches from all over the world. You have the mainline Linux tree, you've got the Android tree perhaps, you've got a lot of features that have very little in them. Uh, and you may have the, yeah, some, some branches from, from the ARM SOC tree and you just want to merge them all together. So you have one branch <coughs> that, you, that you use um, for your product and then you pull in the topic branches. But you never apply anything on the, on the product branch. You always only do pulls from the topic branches. And um, you can at any time rebase the, the product branch to just do an, another octopus merge 
the clean octopus merge from the other branches. I think. That's the, the way that I would recommend. But that's not the important part. Like, um, the important thing is to have topic branches that you can rebase individually. So any suggestions for developers who have dependencies on multiple topic branches then? Um, should they, their topic branch be based off of the merge of those two? Then? So um, the ideal case is to, to avoid the, the strict dependencies. Like if there's, there, there are multiple kinds of dependencies. One, one kind of dependency would be um, someone is writing a file and you, you have a small patch to that file. So there, there's no way you can get around that. You, you have to have that, that right. file in your, in your tree before you can do that patch. <coughs> then you have to pull it in and do your, your stuff on top of that and rebase it every time you get a new version. Um, most of the time, you like, don't actually need that. So you, you're writing a small feature. Um, it doesn't have strict dependencies, but there may be some merge conflict because you add a, add a line in one file and another branch adds another line in the same position. So what about I'm writing a driver for an I2C device mm -hmm. on a new platform where somebody else is also writing the I2C bus driver? So I can certainly write my driver, but you can't test it until they're merged together. Right, and that's, that's, that's the easy case, I think. So you can write your driver. You have your driver in one branch, and this branch only contains this one driver. And this other branch contains the bus driver. Um, and then when you want to test it, you do a, a, an octopus merge of those two, plus some other branches that you might want, and then you test that, that octopus merge. And then you back up the merge. Right. OK. And I think that with Garrett, that, that's something that's even supported for the, for the Android folks. So you can have multiple branches that always get pulled into some, some test tree. Although Garrett really encourages having a history tree, which is not a good idea for a lot of things, as we heard of. Um, um, one thing that, that people really need to know about is interactive rebase. How many of you have never used interactive rebase? Oh, it's just a few, but I'm going to show it anyway. I think it's really important, and maybe some people just didn't raise their hands because they, oh, they might not be interested. Um, so I've just checked out a branch. Oh, let's, let's do this one. Oh, check out. So Linus sent me the SD Ericsson branch as one of the first branches that I merged into the Armstrong tree. And at the time, uh, I, I wasn't really sure how to do it, so I did not ask him to do topic branches. Everything was in one branch and was okay, but he was really the first one, so that's fine. Uh, but what, what do you do when you have a branch and you need to split it up into topic branches? Um, so these are the contents of that branch. We have uh, a bunch of patches based on top of the release candidate from Linux. By the way, whenever you start a topic branch, you should start it on top of an upstream release. If you have a topic branch that you want to get merged into the next, um, into the next merge window, then you should do it on the latest release candidate. If you have some long-running topic branch and you don't expect it to be merged for another two or three versions, then you should start the topic branch of the latest release version from Linux. 3.0 or 2639 for that. Um, so let's start the interactive rebase. Um, interactive rebase means that I get a list of the patches that are in this branch. And then I can just choose any of these. Um, maybe one thing I should do. I just do another branch with the same contents. Um, Where's the key? It's usually a key, isn't there? Is it just sorry? Where's the key to show you what we we um, there is? We know it's just too small. Um, so I've got five options now. Um, 
each of these normally gets picked. Picked means just um, they get applied on top of the same version. And that's the easy case. Um, so this is identical to the one I had before. I didn't I didn't edit the uh, anything in the list. Except they are different commits. They are uh, yeah, I, for some reason and some some git versions would just reuse the old commit and this version doesn't. I never figured out why that is. Maybe it's a setting. Um, I can also rebase on the on different version. Just forward port it to RC5. Um, and now it's definitely different. So what I'm going to do now is split this up into one branch for the snowball support and one branch for everything else. And let's see how this goes. I haven't actually tried this before. Um, um, and you need to help me a bit. So which, which of these I actually relate to the snowball? Uh, so I guess I, I just delete them. Yeah, where you have a snowball. Keyword in it. So, okay. uh, so the first few are all not related to Snowball, right? <coughs> Let's believe them. Yeah, well, if you want to build them. <laughs> I, I don't care about keeping uh, it. Uh, it's, uh, it's the ones with uh, Snowball in you know. Okay, I just use all that say Snowball. Yeah. So it's the first, I, I remove the first few, I remove the last few. Yeah. Um, and then I rebase. I just, oh, and there's a conflict. And I fix up the conflict. And most of the time, you would probably now use a merge tool, and I just pretend this is the right fix, which it probably is not. Um. <coughs> And this is the snowball <coughs> branch. And I should. Snowball. Move the other branch. Create another branch. Now I'm doing the fixes. Um, again, I create a new branch, STE fixes, based on the original branch, and then I rebase it. Um, and there may be other ways to do this, but this is how I do it. Um, do an interactive rebase. You wouldn't actually need to, in, need to be interactive. I rebase it, base it on top of the snowball branch. And now you can see the list only contains the, the commits that are not. Oh, actually, it does contain some. It does contain some snowball things. We'll see how it goes. They are there, but once you start the process, yep. Git is smart enough to, to realize that those patches are only for five, so it will skip them as many. Okay. I think it has removed some of the snowball patches, but not all of them. I don't know. Maybe all the that did not change at all. Yeah, all those yeah. before the merge. Let's see what the conflict patch before you yeah. So here's the same conflict. Um, just do another arbitrary fix up that you would need to do properly. And now at some point it should stumble over the commits that are already there. Um, 
Okay, so this commit is already in the tree, so I just, just do a rebase skip. And this one too, it's okay, config for snowball. This two. And there's the rest. So this is for now the line. Now we've got RC5 followed by the snowball, um, followed by everything else. <laughs> but I only want the fixes in this branch. Um, so now I branch. I do just do a temp branch to remember the state. You could also do a rebase. Um, yeah, there, there are multiple steps to go from here. Uh, this is, yep. Um, so the other way would be to, to just rebase this without the snowball patches on on the on the main branch again. Um, but I first want to do another branch for the for the bug fix. And I just pick whatever looks like a, like a bug fix. Um, correct parameters. Activate. This is not a bug fix. Need something. It's not a bug fix. It's probably not a bug fix. This yeah. clean up. So this is a bug fix. Probably. Um. snowball patches and the bug fixes, but I don't want them in this order, I want them in separate branches. So now I do the rebase onto um, rebase um, snowball onto Is this right? Uh, I, I, I always have yeah, I try it. Um, you need an extra argument, though. Yep. What's the, which argument am I missing? Rebase up. Do you mean interactive there? No, he yeah. usually wants Get on to the name of the branch you're already on, and then the first branch, you, the first commit you want, and then head is how I usually do it. Do you need the minus minus, minus rebase? rebase. It's an argument to rebase. If you go with three arguments, it's young, on to, destination, Starting point and end point. Um, so, onto usually the name of the branch you're on. Like this? The, the, the branch you want oh. the, the zero patches to be applied. Did you mean the second rebase? The v3.0 rc5 needs to be the name of the branch you're on. Yeah, you've you got on. git rebase, dash dash rebase. Oh, that doesn't work. But after the onto, you need the uh, name of the branch. Okay, um, I, I was confused yeah. by this. I, I don't do it that often. Let's just see what it does. No, this did not work. Um, I think it should be the other way around, right? You want head the last one. Head? And instead of, I would name the first one you want. Your list. Set to new base, if they want to. There's no new base, there's our stream and branch. Okay. Um, okay, people are getting bored, I think. Um, I'll say, because the interactive rebase has got lots of, lots of good, useful. Uh, 
do lots with it. We'll yes, I, I can also minutes. do that. Yes, I can just do the interactive one. It long. Um, you need a git alias for that, aren't hmm? you? need to start using git aliases. Unless ah. you like, love typing a lot. Yes, possibly. <laughs> um, one thing which is good to mention is whatever you do, if you use Kula, there's always git ref log. Yes. 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 You can always get go back log. in time. Because the ref log is recording everything you do, so it's always possible to go back to a previous right. state. Okay, so now I just did the interactive version of the Rebase Onto, which is also fine. Um, Rebase Onto is very useful if you need it a lot, and if you don't need it a lot, then you forget how to use it. Um, forget how to use it. Yes. You read the web page every time. <laughs> yep. Okay. Uh, Git ref log. <coughs> that's that's an excellent one. I really like that. So I assume I screwed up. This is the whole history of what I've done recently. So with all the every check out every step of the rebase, and I can just use the, the versions here to, to reset it. Um, so I did it last. Let's assume the rebase was wrong. I have. This is what I'm current what I currently have. Yeah, I can just do a hard reset to that version. Oh, that was. Or you can even create a branch from one of those yes. points. Uh, and this was even wronger. So. Ref <laughs> log, but it doesn't matter. I've got the ref log. Um, log dash is useful. Okay, so now I've got um, STE Snowball. Um, oh, and this was also wrong. Did wrong? That's also a helpful thing. Uh, and I think people are getting distracted by, by right now because I'm not really showing anything interesting that people haven't. One thing that's interesting, if you find yourself fixing the same merge conflict over and over again, enable re re re, and it will just do it for you. Once yes, you've done it once. Uh, Git re 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 is good for that. What? Uh, Git re re is great. Um, yeah, just Google it and we don't have time to look yes. at it. Today. You, the, the important thing about git re re is you need to enable it once, like yes. git config re 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 dot enabled. Um, like I can't remember. Yeah. Something like that. If if you do that, you get automatic fix up of the same things you always need to fix up. It does remember incorrect fix ups too. <laughs> so. Yeah, but you can discard them yeah. one by one. One other trick, which is sometimes nice to have, is git rebase, not the interactive one, but you then do dash dash white, white space equal fix. And it will rebase everything, fixing all the white space errors or uh, things that people are usually not wanting to come. Okay, can you say that command again? Git rebase dash dash white space equal fix. And then you have to specify the range you want to rebase. It will just reapply all those patches while fixing all the white space uh, on the white space errors. 
That is really cool. <laughs> According to kernel rules of white space. Yeah. <coughs> okay. well, well, those are the only rules. If you, right? want, if you <laughs> want to be picky, you can, you can configure all those rules, white spaces, what you want, what you don't want, and everything like that. It's configurable. But the default is the typical kernel. Did you go over git add dash dash patch? That's quite good when you want to stage mm -hmm. different chunks at different positions. Say, usually you just git add one, two, three files, but if you want to add parts of the hunks from different files, that's uh, interactively adding parts of the patch. You mean git, git add dash i? Add, no. uh, yeah, dash i or dash dash patch is usually what I use. But okay. Um, and I, I really prefer a dash e because then you can edit the patch into your edit. Oh, wow. Without even caring about the, uh, the hunks numbers, yeah. you just delete and add those the, those hunks you want, mm -hmm. and it will just recompute everything and add only the parts that are remaining. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's cool. useful. <coughs> wow. This is extremely useful. So uh, if this was a bug, uh, I could just... Oh. And I've got... Um, do it again. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think the most uh, useful thing about it is when you sort of... Uh, when there's lots of stuff. Yeah, you have you, you changed lots of stuff and, oh, oh my god, I need to split this in different yeah. patches. So that's, that's and uh, I changed 10 places in the same file and I just want to stage 1, 2, and yeah. 7 of so those I just, hunks. <laughs> I, I just reset to the, to the branch without the fixes. Yeah. Um, so there's 3... That's yeah. pretty cool. And there's oh. And I can, uh, yeah, I've, I've used this before, but I don't use it all that much, so I'm, I'm rather slow at that. So it's like, you can choose this one, and then you go, it goes through the individual hunks, right? And you can split some same more. same using this GUI as well, it's one like, use GUI as a okay. right click on any line and add multiple index on the... Uh, yes. So in this case, I'm... Um, <coughs> going through the changes and I have split up one patch to one file to one hunk. Uh, I staged this one and not staged that one and staged this one again and not this one. I think given a choice between system D and git take over the world, I'd rather see git take over the world. Mm -hmm. This is also really useful if you have a really old branch that has lots and lots of changes in, in one giant commit and you will need to split up that commit into topic branches. The other thing that I do in that case is I um, do git format patch to create me a series but, on, but then pass a subdirectory. So I assume you've got a, a branch that has um, like uh, you, you've got uh, a repository that has changes to one driver and changes to the architecture, and you want to have topic branches. What I do then is git format patch uh, drivers slash, and it will put out a list with the uh, with all the patches that went into that directory and have them as patch files. And then I go to a new branch and just do git am to get all the new all the commits in there. And then I do a rebase of the original branch on top of that branch and then it will only have the other commits for the for the architecture directory, even if they were in the same commits originally. And there's probably a nicer way to do that, but that's how I do. That becomes totally unbisectable usually, right? The result. If you have cross dependencies about the two things you split up. So, um, changes. so this this is yeah. for the case um, that I've encountered a few times when looking at VSP trees, 
where basically someone went and forward ported 2629 to 2635 and squashed all the changes that went into 2629 into one huge chunk. Yeah. So they are not related at all. They, are okay. just, they just happen to be in the same commit oh. and you want to get them out of there. Okay. Um, so if, if they are, of course, dependent on, it, on one another, then you shouldn't split them. But you can also do that with the interactive, uh, interactive ad. What else do we need to show? Does, any, the, does everyone who, sorry, who is submitting patches to a mailing list know about git send email and git format patch? Okay, good. <coughs> Just remember, thread the messages. Um, do not chain. Do not use the chain reply. So that you have one message zero and lots of mails replying to that. It's off by default now, isn't it? I don't know. On some uh, new version of Git. I think on new Git itself, so it's yeah, default. The thread, thread reply is off. I think it's yeah, by default it doesn't change. Yes, that's good. Um, how much time do we have? Uh, Minus two minutes. If your clock's right. Um, I'm not sure which time zone is it. Is it one o'clock? It's noon right now. It's noon. Not around. Not as well. Okay. So I have a question about yes. exactly related to this. Um, <laughs> Git AM has a uh, dash three to attempt a three-way merge, which works okay as long as you have the blobs that the person who sent you the patch. Is there an easier way of applying a patch where you don't have their base? The, the best I've been able to come up with that is just using the patch command and then massaging the commit text into the commit message. Is there any way to beat AM into just I trying to apply to the patch? I haven't found one. Okay. But if someone finds them, please tell us. <laughs> or implement The basic apply, apply patch command, you can specify the, the amount of fuzzy fuzz you can accept into your Probably it could be. Or you just tell them to please replace their patch on. But I remember that Linus didn't want that because he wanted to be sure that if one of the patch into a 200 series again is not applying, he wanted the process to stop right away and not try to respond. Yeah. So there's still a bit of policies for Linus in there. I usually do everything directly, so I. I try git am and when it fails, then I do patch dash p1 and just feed in the patch and see if the fuss is taking it and then look at the result of commit. Right. It's just you then have to do the tech, commit text manually, cutting it out of the... Oh, uh, no, it takes the commit text from git am and just fails to apply the patch. So nothing's changed. And oh, then and you then, you do the, then you do the git am. Yeah. Well, just so, did, so I just do... Git am resolve. Yeah. Right? Okay. So I git add and git am resolve and then I, I get you know, the same commit but different... Uh, so that was actually the answer. Okay, yeah. question. Yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> Anything else we should really get to in the, in the time we don't have? Point on stat get. I use stat get all the time, probably because I started using it before git rebase was usable, mm -hmm. and um, I've got the, the muscle memory to use it. And I'm, I find it's great, it works really well for me. I use stat get a lot for generating um, uh, patch series that are going into subversion rather than 
Git, so the Git email tool is not particularly useful. But, and I would like to know, if you're not using it, how do you go back for patches, edit that bit, then recommit it? Ah. Oh. So how, how do you do that without using stack? That's the part of interactive rebates that I didn't show. Mm -hmm. uh, I should show that. It's, it's really wonderful. I, I spent a week completely reorganizing the patch series, 70 patches, splitting them all, merging them, reordering them, so they all follow the last logical order. And then, so I spent a week doing Git rebates by design. <laughs> so this is something wow. that stack does. You want to see things very simple. I mean, it, I still use the clocks. I'm so behind the Don't use quilts. <laughs> Yeah, I actually use CBS as well sometimes. So. <coughs> yeah. no, but, so, uh, there is a thread on those. I mean, Thomas is using Quilt for all the yeah. real time free because none of the other tools do what it needs it to. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you so, the, the thing that you edit a patch in the middle is you start an interact prebase and then use one of the other commands that I did not show. So, the only command <coughs> I saw was pick. Um, yeah. So, the, the other commands are. Uh, squash, which basically means um, it applies the patches and then takes the last two, puts them in one patch, um, and merges the two commit messages. Um, and then you can edit the commit message um, in whatever way you like. And this is not a good way to do it, but uh, <laughs> showing this is one commit message that you end up with, and then you get out and then you press rebase. Uh, the other the next command is uh, fix up. So fix up squashes this commit into this one and throws away the message. So you, you don't get an editor window. <coughs> you do that when you have uh, if, if you do edit a new feature, add some more some more patches and then you notice a bug in the feature, you fix that bug on top and then you do an interactive rebase, move the patch around, uh, and do and, and That is the most common way I think yeah. patches is with yeah. fix up. Because yeah. um, you reorder the patches in that yeah. list, you just sort them around and it's all part of that order. The list of bash can be reordered, so it doesn't have to be as originally pop up. can just reorder the patch. So revert goes and just opens the commit message in an editor during the rebase. So you can um, uh, edit the message and um, everything else stays the same. And the final one is edit. Edit. And you can always abbreviate them with one letter. Um, and with edit, you go to the exact commit. So git show shows you where you're, where you're at. So this is the current commit, and then you can um, um, git show. show. I, I've just reversed the patch, but it's still in there, so I now I do a Hit add interactive add. Um, and now I can edit the patch. <coughs> so I've just removed something from the patch. And then I do git commit dash dash amend, which just Do whatever you want, and then in the end, do git rebase continue, um, and then we'll keep applying the other patches that you have not applied. The one so thing it's a way of splitting the patch. You've got one patch, so you want to split into two. Then. Right. You can, you can do all sorts of things. That's one of, yeah. one of the things that happens frequently. Um, 
the one thing you must not do is um, forget that you're in the middle of an interactive rebase, do something else, check out another branch, and then accidentally type git rebase continue, because that will then not do what you want. <laughs> Yes. Uh, and what will be the easier way of uh, reordering the patches? So I have 10 patches, but uh, I want to reorder the patches. So that's the rebase interaction. Yeah, that, um, I, I guess I didn't really show that yet. So inside of the interactive rebase, you can, when you edit the file, you can just take out two patches at the start and put them at the end. Uh, or somewhere else, yes. You can even have the same patch in there twice. Um, which normally doesn't work. But, you know, right. So if I want to take one patch, one, one, one commit, split it into two, mm -hmm. for whatever reason, right. you can just put it in there twice, once with an edit, and you can't have the one. Exactly. Yeah, that, that's, that's a good thing. Yeah, let's, <laughs> let's just do that. Um, oh. Yes. So, um, like this. Yeah, that's that's actually a really good way. I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> so the f in the first one you do a, an edit, and the second one you just do a pick. Um, so the second one will fill, and then you can... No, the f first, you get to the first one, um, and it adds two things here, and it might not, the second one might not even fail. So let's just... So I'm taking this one. Um, so all that's left in here is now the one addition. Commit and it. Um, okay, config for what's the name? Hey, it's right, three sixty. the board, I guess. No, it's a yeah. board variant. <laughs> okay. And then, this is this. It's a rebase. Continue. Oh, wait. And now, now we've got a part of the commit left in here. Um, which is what got reverted. Um, Contains oh the patch actually contains both. I yeah I forgot to add. Yes, that is. And I should actually end. Now it complains that it can't apply that because it's already in there. Um, and it just takes it up. And if they weren't actually the same place, it would just work because it will figure out that a certain hunt is already in there and it will not apply it again. At least most of the time. Now we split up one patch into And I think this was not lot nicer than the way that I would do it. <coughs> Should, is there anyone who likes me to split up his branch for him? <laughs> right now, when we have, as a demo. That, that might be some, something interesting when we have some something with a with a weird history and we we, we should we can do as a group here figure out a way to, to fix it up. Is that something we should do? <coughs> I've tried this before on the STRX and no not on the STRX. I've tried it on the Freescale uh, BSP branch. 
quite interesting. I didn't get that far, but I think all the work that I got never got picked up by the people because they are not using public branches. Um, But if there's nothing that, that people are interested in, you should probably just get back and you know, work out of it. Okay. I have one question. Yes. Uh, when you have a merge conflict or uh, um, something that not, that's not uh, applying correctly, you have a message, uh, how to keep track of this message while you are actually solving the problem? If you try to comment, while he didn't resolve all the conflicts, it will tell you that there are still things that need to be resolved. It tells you, it tells you which, which files are still missing uh, conflict resolution. <coughs> but you made the, com the commit message for all of No, no, the, the herald uh, comments that are given by Git and the uh, Sometimes it tells you where, where you where you should start from when you have solved the issue, mm -hmm. and things like that. You can always use git status. It will tell you which files are modified and which are unresolved. Yeah. I think the question sometimes if you're doing a rebase or a cherry pick specific, specifically, it will tell you once you've resolved it, do git commit dash c something. Yeah, exactly. And it is easy. Uh, how to keep that. track of this slash C? Oh, you, you mean, wow. Okay. Telling the history. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Probably that cherry pick is substandard in that regard because when you, you do things and re, you do your results conflicts with uh, rebase, it'll remember the next time you commit where is the previous uh, commit message that was associated with that patch. But I think it's just cherry pick which requires you to specify where the commit message came from. Rebase at least is dash dash continue. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? What's the syntax to really head patch one to ah. three one? <laughs> okay. Yes. Um I've used that a few times and I didn't explain what I was doing here. So when I do git log, it starts at the head. The head is the latest commit on the current branch. So this is equivalent to this. Head <coughs> head is the one before that. Um, and you can use the, and there's it's, it's a very complex syntax that you can use and I don't know all of it, but you can look it up in um, one, one of the main pages. Um, you can also do um, hmm. right. so you can tell the you can use this when, when specifying anything. You can rebase to an earlier version or what I did earlier was git reset head um, and that basically means it uh, changes the the current head pointer to the previous one, but leaves the, the changes. So those are still in here, and then I can do another commit with a different message. And is that different to head minus one, head minus two? You, know, you can put minus as well, can you? No, it's a tilde. Tilde. Oh, tilde. Oh, I think that's the man pages. It's subtly different if you've got merges. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. One yeah, so tilde one is the same as uh, head. head without. So it's just one character less the time. It's sloppy. You can say just the tilde head too. Hmm? Can you say just tilde? <laughs> this is different. 
Yeah, but you can set it till the seven or the seven for seven patches back. Oh, uh, I did a reset, yeah. No, <laughs> I think Tilde walks the first parent yeah. Yeah. the number of times. Carrot is which parent you're specifying. So if you say carrot two to get the second parent. Yeah, I've never figured out the syntax for these completely. I, I can look it up when I need it. Right. I think it's what's got me was is the when you use dot dot switch by range. Uh, to, 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 the first one it, the first one isn't included in the range. Mm -hmm. No, it's not. So it's uh, it's equivalent yeah. to saying end of range and then carrot beginning of range. It's kind of a set operation. This all of the commits from here that not including all of the commits reachable from the first part. Yeah, yeah. I know when I script up things, I always uh, pass it. So I pass in the commit I want, and it yeah, picks the pair and stuff I actually. Yep. Do you know what? about the git log dash dash one line? I, I shot git log dash dash one line a few times. Okay. Yeah, we should probably talk a little bit more about various options for git log because there's just so many of them and you always find out new ones. So what's. Uh, Especially the grab option. Um, yeah, that's very, very good. good. I really wanted to show them, I totally forgot about them. So one line is, is very useful, especially if you've got a 40 by one display like, like Nico has. Um, but also, like if you've got a um, proper terminal. You can use a GUI for this. Yes. Um, I sometimes do one line dash dash stat, um, which is fairly unusual, but uh, I find this nice to just read to, to find out exactly where the big changes are what commits. Um, I really like the dash s, the dash s command, which lets you grab for um, uh, things that have certain symbols in them. So like this one, um, git log dash s config rcu only finds changes that have the string config rcu. Um, changed. Um, a variation of that is <coughs> dash dash grab, um, which just grabs for the change log. So I, I just look for my own name here, um, show all the commits in the history that, that have my, my name in it. Um, six, 39. So if I want to know what got into the 3.0 release um, that I had anything to do with. And I'm fortunate because I'm the only one with that name doesn't work for Linus. <laughs> <laughs> I can't use my second name. <laughs> yes, that's true. Family name is fine. Um, I was actually what it is. So I can just check out. There were 47 patches that mentioned me in the change log. So either signed off by or something else. You can do short log as well. You mean git short log? Yeah, short log and then the same range as you would do normally. Okay, I've never used that, I think. Oh. Ah, wow, that's great. Yeah, I, I always wonder where you get those lists. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and now you can do short log dash s dash n. Dash s dash k? Uh, or git s. Dash s dash n. Lowercase s. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. It gives you a. You so know, try dash that with dash dash no merges. No. Uh, so suddenly Linux has disappeared from the list. <laughs> 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 the Microsoft guys up at the very top with twice as many commits as David Miller. That's really cool. What other options do people use with git log? <laughs> I've used left right before. If you're writing scripts and things, git format. Well, you don't need a git log format. You don't need a comment here. The thing which is cool if you have no GUI is git log 
dash dash one line dash dash graph. Ah, yep, one line. I've, I've used that before, that's also difficult. Um, which log, log, log helps. Um, yep, so that's if you don't have your GUI. Yeah, yeah that's, that's readable. Yeah, I don't find that very readable. So what was the, <laughs> what was the left to right one? I'm not sure I can come up with a place where it would be useful. I mean, it's just going to have right arrows in that case. Okay. Maybe you need to. Yep. Yeah. What are the arrows? <laughs> it's if you use. Um, well, find something with dot, 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 where you have two branches you care about. So that's something interesting there, but one of yours and dot, dot, dot. It'll tell you which of the ones it's coming from. Ah, okay. Um, so if you did like v3.0 and then one of your branches is based on something. Okay, yep. Uh, cool. Yep. So the the left ones are all that went into trip and the and the right ones are the ones with the local branch. This did not get matched because of the type of three Yeah, let's go. Cool. Is there anything to run check batch on your on your staged files? What I mean without having to do it manually? Um you could do it on the output of GitHub and check some things. I think you can do it with Git filter. I've never actually used Git filter, but one of my colleagues is using it. Who, who knows about Git filter? Uh, filter branch. Filter branch. If, if you yeah. bring out the main page for that, you have all the examples in there, things you can do with it. It's really cool. For example, if you have that huge uh, batch series and someone says, OK, I'm an act, uh, add my act to all of them. Mm -hmm. So if you don't want to do it manually, you can use filter branch just to modify the, the commit message for all those patches. And the, the example for doing that is, is just there in the main page. Okay. You can also, yeah, you can edit commit messages to add things. So for example, <coughs> at my, one of my previous jobs we had used, we integrated Bugzilla and Git. So we just actually run a, a custom command we had. I could say I accept this this patches and I would basically add the bug fix number to all the all the patches in the log. Yep. Very cool. And then you need to get filter to remove those those messages again when it's in the dot stream. Right. Or remove the error and change or anything. Right. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> another good use case. Um, and I think you can also do this uh, the scenario that I explained manually before. Like um, you have one driver that you you don't want in your branch. Um, I guess with Git filter you can just remove those commits that, that only have commits uh, only have changes in this directory. Yeah, uh, you, you can do almost anything because the input is a script. You yeah. just you just pass it the bash commit, the bash script or whatever, and it decides on the fate of it, each commit it goes through. It evals the argument inside of the script, mm -hmm. which is both good and. Can we see that? Can we see that running? Just look at the main page and search for the example there. Yeah. It's, it's really enlightening. So if someone else wants to show bit filter branch commands, I'm, I haven't used them before, I would get them wrong. But. It's another one I have to just read the main page. Yeah. Any other favorite commands? Yeah, I, I use um, dash dash no merges a lot. So I just don't care about the merge history. I just want to see the actual changes. That's really useful. Yeah. If you want to condense it at the high level, there's this git data miner, git dm, that uh, Jonathan Corbet and also using for LWM. 
you can do, uh, if you really want to make, you know, management presentations on who is doing what and how much and so on. Not that I particularly like that, but the tool is tailored to do that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yep. Get the uh, yeah, get get the, uh, the data miner. It produces these two rows, kernel legs, stats. Mm. For example, it condenses sort of if you have 20 email addresses or you even change name, you can sort of configure it to recognize that, that as one single person, you can break down commits per company with some metadata file and so on. Is that in work editor or something? No, no, it's outside. It uses git commands and then it probably uses git filter branch to uh, perform all these operations. It was pretty fun when I tried it, but it's, it's uh, I think Greg wrote it, right? So it's on some git there, but Half of the secret with it is the metadata, and that's not in there. That's kept at some place no, else. Also, you can also download it. You can? Okay. Yes, yeah. like the, it's on FCP, LW, and okay. then I think. It's just, I don't, I don't know, it's probably also a good treat. Yeah. I thought about submitting a patch to let me be counted as Linaro and they yeah. or let and all of us be counted as Linaro as an organization. Yes, for example. Yeah. Yeah. My name is always listed to that as IBM. Yeah. I don't know if people know about uh, oh, Git alias and you can create scripts to start with Git hyphen that are in your path and now you have these as Git commands. Huh? Mm -hmm. If you create a Git hyphen foo in your path and then you can say Git space foo. There's a, a, I don't remember where it came from, there is a contrib repo that you can actually just put these things and link them into your path and oh. it has a bunch of utilities for them. Maybe we should show our git request pull. Okay. Yeah, that's a good one. Git. Um, and maybe someone can answer me why, why this failed. Um, So git request pull, I usually type it into my favorite editor. And then I copy that into my mail client. I don't I haven't figured out a way to use K mail directly to type with this. That basically creates the format that people want from for pull request. Or the fetch and the pull are different, or the fetch and the push are 
Sometimes the mirrors don't sync quickly enough. So. Okay. Yeah, but usually when you send a pull request upstream, then it should have been tested before. That means it should not just be a new branch. Well, but I mean, like the, the repo that people pull from, from me, nobody, there's very few people who have SSH access. Yes. But the Git URL works fine. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering if there's an easier way, because I've just been spelling out the whole URL and I make a pull request. Yeah, I don't know. I, I would try just setting that differently. <coughs> Any other commands? Can you call me this yet? Oh, and I should show you some YouTube video. <laughs> Many of you have probably seen this already, but if you have Not good. So what did you search for then? Uh, Blackberry not working. Um, can we turn on the microphones? Or? I think those are just for the dialogue. 